Hi everyone, welcome to the AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today we'll be exploring two more services from AWS. The first one is RDS, that is Relational Database Service, and DynamoDB. So even in our previous class, we talked about the database services from AWS, where we explored Athena and Redshift. So Athena is something like the data is already stored in S3 and without having a separate data query engine and that is completely serverless, you can very easily analyze your data on S3. On the other side, we talked about uh, Redshift that is not serverless and the data will be stored within Redshift. You can create the table. You have the full control over the tables. That means you can create the record, you can delete the record, you can update the record. Now, we will be talking about two more database related services, RDS and DynamoDB. So let's start the class with the agenda. So the agenda for today's class is overview of RDS service, launching a RDS instance of type MySQL, Multi AZ for RDS instance, AZ stand for availability zone, RDS read replica, overview of DynamoDB, create a table in DynamoDB, add items in DynamoDB table, read and write capacity, and read consistency. These are the different concepts different topics about RDS and DynamoDB and we'll be doing this thing practically. Let's start with RDS. So RDS is a managed relational database service for MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle and SQL Server. So in our previous class we talked about Athena and Redshift. But that is completely AWS native database services. It may be possible that your project is already using the traditional RDBMS. That can be MySQL, that can be PostgreSQL, Oracle or SQL Server. Now when you are migrating your project from on-premise to cloud, then you may not be interested to change your database. Because your application is currently working perfectly fine with MySQL or with Oracle or with SQL Server. Now, AWS is helping you to migrate, but at the same time, you are saying that my application is working fine with Oracle and I do not, I don't want to change my DB. I still want Oracle. Yes, that is true that earlier the Oracle was running on my local server, on my uh, premises. Now, if you have a Oracle available on cloud then it's okay but i don't want to change my db in that case rds will be helpful and you can choose from relational database key value pair database document dbs in memory and graph type databases that means rds provides a lot of variety you can choose as per your need and you can choose from like you are already using some db right that should be available with RDS so that you don't have to make any application level code changes. And AWS continuously monitors your cluster to keep your workload running with automated scaling. When you are using Oracle or MySQL on premise, then that is not auto scalable, right? Because in case your load is increasing, then your Oracle or your SQL server, which is running on your local premises that will be overloaded on the other hand if you are using these databases on rds that is completely scalable as and when your load is increasing it will auto scale your db you can focus on application development as a user it's not your worry to uh, you can say think about installation or any upgradation or a newer version of mysql has come security patches that is not your concern that will be completely taken care by aws so 
high availability, reliability, security, all these things will be taken care by AWS. As a user, you can always concentrate on your application development. So these are few features about RDS. And this is the, you can say, not the full list, but you can choose from this one. You can use MariaDB, you can use Aurora, that is native of uh, AWS. You can go with Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, PostgreSQL and MySQL. These are the major RDBMS used by different companies and all these are available on Amazon RDS. So now before we create a RDS instance, what we will do is, first of all, I need to log in into my console. Just give me a moment. So I will be logging into my AWS console. Okay, so I will be searching for RDS. And you can see that there is no database available as of now in RDS. So that is fine. We'll create one. So you can click on create database so there is a standard create and there is a easy create easy create means you can read this description use recommended best practices configuration some configuration option can be changed after the database is created if you want to know about many more options I mean if you want to choose those options manually you go with standard create otherwise you can go with easy create so let's go with standard one so that you will come to know about all the configuration related to your database. So I will go with standard create. Then what type of database engine you want to go with? MariaDB, Postgres, Oracle. There are a lot of, right? I will go with MySQL. Because MySQL is first of all, it's an open source and it's very common. But as per your project's need, suppose your project is already using Oracle, then you can go with Oracle. Okay. After that, the next one is engine version. That means the latest version of MySQL. So if you have a specific requirement, suppose your application is running on a specific version and you may not be interested to go with the latest one, right? In that case, you can go with specific one. But in this case, because I am creating a fresh, I am going with the latest version. After that, you want to create the database for production. That means high availability and fast and consistent performance. Or you want to go with you, your purposes for development and testing. In that case, you can go with this version. And the last one, but not the least, is free tier. That's good for us because we are installing for learning purpose and we want to go with always free tier. So use RDS free tier to develop new application, test existing application or gain hands-on experience with Amazon RDS. So this is good. We will go with this one. And one more thing you will notice is as soon as we selected free tier, these options disappeared. Multi-AZ and all. If I will go with dev and test, you can see that these options are enabled. So multi-AZ means multiple availability zones. That means your database will be available in multiple more than one availability zones. That means 
if unfortunately one instance of your DB is down or not reachable by any means, in that case, you can access it from another availability zone. Your application will be smart enough that in case one instance is not accessible, it will access from another availability zone. That's the purpose of multi-AZ. But don't forget that if you are going with multi-AZ, that means it will add the cost. It will double the cost. Because at any point of time, your database is running in both the availability zones. That definitely make your cost double. But that's a, you can say, balance between the availability and the cost. It depends what you are looking for. If you are looking for cost effective, go with single availability zone. If your project is very critical and your higher management is saying that cost is not a concern but the database should be available all the time. In that case, you can go with multi-AZ deployment. Okay. So, before we come down, before we proceed with other configuration item, I would like to stop here. In case you are having any doubt, till now you can ask me. Okay, seems like there is no doubt. So let's move to the next one. The next one is DB instance identifier. That means your your RDS instance you are creating. Just provide a name of that. So you can see that it's already giving some name, uh, database one, and then credential, username and password, master username basically. Other users. Simple users having limited access that you can create later. But just like in Redshift, you can create a master user now and you can provide the password of your choice. So user is fine, admin and password, right? So manage master credential in AWS secret manager. What is this secret manager? So secret manager Secret Manager is AWS service which is mainly used for managing the passwords. How to use that service, how to store the passwords over there, we will be exploring that separately. We will have a separate class for that. Okay. Next one is, I will uncheck this and you can see this, auto generate a password. After that instance configuration. So what type of instance you are looking for, it depends upon your uh, load. You can go with a smaller one and you can go with higher one also. So if we go with t2.micro. Yeah, that is the smallest one. Let's go with this one. t2.micro. The configuration you can see here, one vCPU, vCPU means virtual CPU and one GB of RAM. So depending upon your requirement, if you look at others, because we are going with free tier, right? If you are going with development or production type of DB, uh, in that case, you will get many more options to choose from. And then you can go with a high configuration RDS instance as well. After that storage, you can see that. So general purpose SSD type of storage is there and allocated storage depends upon like how, what, how many tables will be there, what would be the table size and all. So initially you can go with 20 GB and later on you can enable this auto scaling. This auto scaling means as in when there is a space crunch over there, it will keep on adding the storage. You can see this. Provides dynamically scaling support for your database storage based on your application need. As in when it will keep on like approaching the size, it will add more. And you can see this one also. Maximum storage threshold. The minimum value is 22 GB and maximum is 6144 GB. 